Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. We're going to do a top 5 list of games that people don't really appreciate and we want to bring it to your attention. Kevin's going to join me. What? So what we're going to do is both name off our top 5 games we enjoy that people don't really talk about. Maybe they were a hit when they came out and disappeared under the radar after they were released. Or maybe they just didn't really get a whole lot of favorable attention. This can vary from old games to recent games. Perhaps you have heard of these games? This is just our personal list of games we don't really hear people talk about. So here we go, Kevin and I will list off our top 5 underappreciated games. Number 5, Etrona Odyssey. So I started playing Etrona Odyssey on the 3DS, I never got into the other series, I started with 4. I actually ended up really liking it, and uh, I was surprised that nobody really talked about it that much. It's a old school, typical uh, first person dungeon crawler, where the whole, one of the key gimmicks of it is you get to draw a map on the bottom screen. It does sound like a really boring gimmick, but it's actually kind of nice, like, change of pace between the combat and that. And being a fan of, like, old school, uh, playing D&D, &D, it does have that D&D &D feel, where you're going on like, adventures, you get to build your party, you get into stupid situation with crabs and stuff but i thought it was overall game i think people need to stop uh, talking about more the reason why it's so low on the list is because i feel like it's a very niche title they've only been five uh iterations of the game but i feel like just people need to start talking about it more number five duke nukem forever let's be real there's no way this game was going to live up to the hype but you know what it's awesome it's a great game duke nukem is back he's kicking ass, he's taking names, he's chewing bubble gum, yeah! And there's girls, there's a bunch of little side missions you can do, it varies up the game, and it's just so damn entertaining, and people need to get over the fact that it's not as great as you think it's gonna be, but it's too good to Number four, Vanquish. Now, Vanquish was a game that I started playing because I ended up playing uh, Bayonetta and some other Platinum games, and I saw this uh, third-person shooter, I was like, alright, I'll give it a shot. You know, what, what could go wrong? Well, it was pretty awesome. Uh, it's really short, but it's one of those things I will always say that it doesn't matter how long a game is, as long as it's really fun that I want to keep playing it over and over again, then I'm really happy about it. I, I, overall, I think everybody should check out the game. It takes like a couple hours to beat, but definitely worth the time. Number four, Carrier for the Dreamcast. Next to Code Veronica, Carrier is one of, if not, the scariest game on the Dreamcast. So just kidding, Code Veronica, you're so much scarier. But damn, this game is good. You are confined to a ship, you have all these monsters and zombies going on, and it's actually more plant-based, but it's still very spooky. It's extremely cheesy, but damn, this game is good, and no one ever talks about it. They talk about all the other games that came out of the Dreamcast, but not Carrier. This game needs recognition, damn it. Number three. Dragon's Dogma. So Dragon's Dogma was an action open world RPG that came out a few months after uh, Skyrim. And because of that, it was really, nobody really knew about Dragon's Dogma. Everybody was just still playing Skyrim and talking about Skyrim. But I think Dragon's Dogma was the best uh, RPG IP that came out in 2012. Really fun, open world, had a good amount of challenge to it, but not overly challenging. I'll have to say though, it is very rough around the edges. That user in a fight face will fight you all day. But I gotta say, you'll never get old to jump on a Cyclops and stab in the eye over and over again. Number 3, Conflict Desert Storm for the GameCube. Yes, I have a military game on here, and no, it is not Call of Duty, but damn, this game is entertaining. It's so much fun. Obviously, Conflict Desert Storm came out back when all of its missions were very relevant, and it was probably by means of trying to get people to recruit into the military. Didn't work for me and my friends. We just saw it as an army game, and we had a great time with the four-player co-op for you to do on the GameCube. Check it out if you ever get a chance. It's pretty cheap, and it's I see it everywhere. You need to get this game. Number 2, Metro Last Light. Now, Metro Last Light came out in the same year as Bioshock Infinite, and I'm going to say some blasphemy here, but I actually, I thought Metro Last Light was my shooter of the year, not Bioshock. Uh, the reason why I say that is that Metro had a really good atmosphere, great slow pacing, but still had those creepy elements to it, and I thought it was just overall well done. I have to say it is pretty linear, but when you get to go above the uh, surface and see like all the crazy stuff and explore the swamps, really fun, trying to survive was really cool. I gotta say though, that sci-fi, weird, fantasy you see crap at the end kind of threw me off but overall i say i really enjoyed the game to the full extent number two genome Ah, oh, genome no one ever talks about this game anymore like ever i don't think they even talked about it when it came out when i was a kid no one knew what genome was They're like what the hell is that crazy shit well it's an awesome 
first person experience where you go in these mobile suits and it's a military based game with I believe three or four factions that are fighting against each other. It was so cool and there was a weapon you could use against enemies that causes them to eject out of their ship you could get their ship and then run them over it was the most entertaining thing in the world you need to if you get a chance to play this game you need to play it genome is the shit number one world ends with you now world ends with you was another rpg on the ds and in all fairness i believe is actually the best rpg on the ds like excluding Chronicle. but i i really like this game i will always say i hate square enix's final fantasy i love their side projects and this is a great example of that this game had a lot of like strategy in the combat it used both screens very well you didn't feel like overwhelmed ever a lot of customization over your combat you know your armor that kind of stuff and i actually really liked the story this had like that complicated overly complicated kingdom hearts stuff but you actually when you got to the new game plus you got to read all these journals and actually started making sense started piecing things together definitely good i think everybody if you have a ds needs to check out this game it's really good and number one alone in the dark what alex likes a universally resented game alone in the dark yeah i do i really like this game and you know what i didn't like it at first i was with a lot of people where i hated the ending i'm not gonna spoil it for people but damn now that i really take a look at that ending it was so good it was so risk-taking and i definitely want to do a video where i analyze the ending to really argue why it's such a good ending the game experience yes glitchy is all shit yes there was lots of game breaking bugs in it but damn it i like this game and there you go our top five underappreciated games got anything else you want to say to the folks kev what? I hope you all enjoyed our top 5 underappreciated games. We decided to use this as a catalyst for some upcoming games we want to review in the following episodes. So stay tuned for me to review first on the list, Duke Nukem Forever. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with your friends and share your thoughts in the comment section. I want to hear what you guys think about our list. As a matter of fact, what are your 5 underappreciated games that you know of? I want to know them all! Finally, please don't forget about the Patreon account if you want to help out the show, and check out the webpage for the new webcomics. Click here for some Math Blaster reviewing, or click here for Anarchy Reigns.